ones that uh, firemen, police, and all those things have? Or are they like radios? Personal radio, radio they're walkie-talkies. Okay. Makes sense. So there's one for, one for the four survivors, whoever they are. Four tents. One. Um, are these uh, the same size tents as with the one we have earlier? <laughs> um, yeah, sure. Okay, so they can fit two people decently comfortably, four yeah. people if they're trying to squish in. And each one weighs 30 pounds. Or 30 encumbrance value. Mm-hmm. A toolkit, which I'm assuming has... Nail, nails, pliers, yeah. hammers, yeah, wrenches, it, all sorts of fun stuff. It's uh, for craft basically everything you would use in woodworking. Hmm. Nice, nice, nice. Could probably help out with some mechanics. Maybe not, maybe not totally it's help a, out. It's a, uh, it's a woodworking based toolkit, not like, exactly a mechanics based toolkit. Ah. There's actually, uh, the toolkit specification actually has four different skills. Mm hmm. Makes so it has sense. all the little shaping tools and cutting tools and things like that for... Uh, what a carpenter would end up yeah, using. For shaping furniture and other crap. Mm -hmm. Makes sense, makes sense. Still some, still some useful tools in there for any craft or mechanics job. Just having a wrench is... Well, I don't even know if they have a wrench, but whatever. It's nice to have, damn it. Compass, always good. If someone doesn't have survival, I'm assuming that could help out. Now, that carpenter's kit, would it happen to have, like, a hammer and chisel? Sure. That you can, can do some wood chasing. To, uh, <laughs> well, I'm I thinking try to force the lock. Sure, you could attempt to do that. Mm, probably. If you can get if you a chisels are usually pretty thin, so you can probably get between then there and if you Well even if it's if it's even basically any kind of decent wedge Hello. shape. Just to hammer it in on the lock and just try to break the mechanism. Mm -hmm. Or even just break it inwards. So what are you guys talking about? Oh, this and that. What are we gonna do with your corpse mostly? We're gonna use it to break open the lockbox. I see. Yeah, and of course, no one's asking Podman for help because he's stoned out of his mind. He's got other things to worry about. Yeah. Like his imminent death. Is, uh, is trusty Tony still zoning out? Uh, he's still sort of zoning out, looking out, and looking out there, making sure that nothing comes, but the rain is making it difficult. Oh, no, the probably. rain cleared up at the start. Oh, cool. It's actually it's actually sunny now, like three four p.m., and uh, that's actually a good thing to uh, to know because um, Eugene. Yeah. It's gonna be at uh, basically a uh, plus six bonus. As sort of out of the corner of of Eugene's completely toked up vision, uh, apparently this Zed head has managed to creep in through the church without being heard at all, and with its claws, a plus six bonus, uh, swings at the sort of unmoving and capable of dodging Eugene. <laughs> with that, that would definitely be a hit, and. Uh, on the right arm, dealing 24 points of damage. He does have this armor. Going to be one yeah, so we'll, yeah leather it, jacket it, doesn't count it, as armor. Yeah, it does. Uh, go ahead and roll your armor value. Uh, is that a 1d4 for our leather it's, jacket? Yeah, it's 1d4 for leather jacket. Uh, that's 9, and then doubled that. That is 18 points of damage dealt to Eugene as he is busted out of his pot reverie with a sort of welter of, like, gore and terror as this leering zombie reaches out and just absolutely sends blood gushing, spurting over the back wall of the church. And this, this is going to be a combat situation for Eugene and Tony. 
This I imagine screen. there's going to be a scream involved from <laughs> I assume. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Yeah. All right. Hand to initiative. Uh, Tony will get to go first before uh, Potman. I'm called Zombie. Fletch and uh, Cat do not hear this transpire. Okay. Tony, sitting there, minding your own business. Pretty deaf to the world. And then suddenly you hear a blood-curdling shriek from Eugene. Hmm. Well... Wheeling around, uh, you can see up on that raised area there, one of those clawed son of a bitches. The claws now covered in what you imagine is Eugene's blood. Motherfucker. Um, I guess I'm going to run as far as I can, which I believe is ten. You My can speed move. is ten. Your speed is 10, that's half, so you can move 5 yards in a turn. Yes, is there any way I could go further? Uh, you could. I would allow you perhaps to uh, make a, we'll say, a difficult dexterity test. Uh, if oh, you succeed on... literally the purpose of dash. He doesn't have any. Yeah, I don't have dash. That sucks. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and to, like, succeeding on that would uh, help you assist. Should you fail, I'll, I'll, I might have you fall prone. <laughs> <laughs> on a one. <laughs> Tony's was so nervous and frightened by what happened that he actually falls out of the damn chair that he's in. <laughs> Want to spend his next turn standing back up. Botman, I'm gonna have you uh, roll a one d a difficult willpower test with a minus four. Penalty. Okay. And is this secret or? You can roll this out in the open. Yeah. Roll 1d10 minus 1 plus 3. Okay. Eugene is shaken for a few seconds, but he's actually able to act. Okay. Uh, he's going to just scream and scream. And how far can he dash he move, one turn? Say so he can move six squares uh, normally. Uh, you could definitely run your roll your dexterity plus a uh, running dash. Yeah, and for every success that you get, that would be an extra square. Push running dash. Okay, that's plus six. Go ahead and roll another d10. All right, uh, that's four. So go ahead and move uh, ten squares for me in any direction that you'd like. All right, let's see. One, two, three, four, five. And of course, you can press space if you want to set waypoints for whatever reason. All oh, right. Fine. You can easily there we go, it. and he goes tumbling over the pew. All right, that's perfectly fine. Um, m mostly in blind terror, it, it's not really an intentional tumble. Of course not. Of course but not. he he does turn it into cowering. Yeah, that's fine. And clutching and trying to stop his arm from bleeding. And oh god, sure. Oh god, oh god, oh man. Sure. Okay, that is definitely heard with the scream and scream and scream. Uh, and thump, thump. Fletch, uh, it'll take you guys uh, two turns to get out of the basement. Cat drops the backpack she's stuffing. Zombie moves. Tony can Stands stand up. up. <laughs> Eugene. <coughs> what does Eugene want to do? Um, If he doesn't stop the bleeding, he's going to keep taking damage, right? No. Oh. That's uh, not exactly. It's not this. It's not like a realistic system here. We're doing no, the rated I zombie. You. I got you. Um. She's gonna fucking hide. Okay. Cry. That's perfectly fine. Uh, they can be done. I'll go ahead and clear the prone state off of Tony. Eugene hides. The zombie moves up a bit. And on this one, we'll have you two, uh, Fletch and Kathleen, roll initiative. That initiative. Mm -hmm. 
pressing that button. Okay, well, uh, let's see here. Sort it out a bit. Uh, Fletch gets to go at the end. Kathlin's fine, that's fine, that's fine, that's fine. He definitely got higher than the zombie. Kathlin can be here, Fletch can be there. There is a railing. You guys are heading up the staircase. She's uh, going to try to climb that railing on our next turn. Let's see. Uh, Tony, your intentions. Uh, move there because uh, sprinting caused him to fall on his fat ass. Okay, that's fine. Uh, Cat, you can try to do an acrobatics to uh, vault over. You're looking at a, uh, for your intentions. It's fine. Uh, you're looking at a, due to the reach of it, a minus two. Minus two? Mm-hmm. Just making sure about my acrobatics. Mm -hmm. There we go. Nope. No. Should Kathleen. not be trying to climb with the bat in hand. <laughs> Kathleen does not move at all. Uh, Popman continues his uh, his hiding, and uh, Fletch, you can go ahead and do your intentions. I assume he can walk by me, though. Yeah. Uh, stumbling past her as she kind of <laughs> fails to get over the railing, you know, uh, pressing himself up against the wall quickly to avoid yeah. her. Of course. He continues moving up the stairs and uh, draws his gun. And Fletch can move a whopping eight squares, and uh, you can go ahead and do your move right now. Okay. Tony. All right. Go in there. Well, you can do that. No, On my actually, head. yeah. Cat. I'm moving. I'm just running forward. I know. We're actually walking around this time. All right. Podman's gonna keep hiding, I guess. Yeah. All that. Right. That sounds like the thing that he'd be doing in this state. Okay. Fletch? Uh, continuing to move towards uh, the main area. Okay. From here, uh -huh. all he can see is Tony heading towards the altar area. Right, right. All right, you can go ahead and move your five squares, Tony. And you can go ahead and move your uh, five squares, Cat. There you go. Taking a quick turn around those railings. And Fledge can move his eight squares. You can stop a bit if he wants. <laughs> um, I'm just going to let him go at three to see what he can see there. He can't see uh, anything. So that would be when... four. Yep. Uh. <laughs> Hi. Hand covered in, covered in blood. The back of the church wall. Got on the stained glass window a bit. So, is there like a line of blood through here? Yeah. Spooky. It certainly is. And uh, with that, I'll actually go ahead and have uh, Fletch roll a difficult willpower test for me. At a minus two. Uh, willpower or just fear? Uh, this is a fear test. Okay, so minus two on this. Yeah. I should have specified. Yeah, just a fear test. Actually, I'm already putting in the minus two. <laughs> All right. The so minus two killed it. One d ten. Uh, your with your willpower with him is two, right? Okay, yes. good. Plus two, then minus two is just a straight up one d ten. Okay. Uh, Fletch is nothing more than just momentarily unnerved. No other penalties. Hmm. <laughs> Okay. Tony, intentions. Running five, running five things forward. Can't, intentions. Um, yeah, I'm gonna move the five. Podman cowers. Fletch, intentions. Aim, headshot. Okay. Tony, you can move your five. Aha! Cat, you can move your five. I am now within short range. Time to die, zombie! Podman grovels. Uh, Fletch, you can go ahead and do your aim thing. Hmm. That didn't work right. I told it you not to fine try to on over mine. Told you not to try to overcomplicate things, you son of a bitch. <laughs> I don't know what you're talking about. It worked fine on mine. You can use my aim tool. 
I don't know look, if I... Look, look, if I don't see anything, I can't help you. Yes, uh... Okay, so D10 plus... Perception plus your weapon skill. There you go. That's, uh... Two successes, so that can be a plus two to your attack roll. Okay. Lose one space. Your time to shoot. He is in point blank now. Hooray. Plus one, plus two. You can go ahead and give me a description then, Seven. Please do. He goes down. As Fletch rounds the corner and Tony's running forward, I still haven't noticed uh, Pot Man sitting behind the the pew where the blood trail ends, although I imagine I might hear some sort of whimpering as he cowers. Yeah, comes around, raises his gun, takes a moment to let it level, and just bam, right between the eyes. Alright, the clawed zombie drops down to the ground inanimate. And the combat scene is over. Cat's gonna notice the blood trail and immediately go back down and grab the doctor's bag and bring it up. Well, and a first aid kit, just in case. Oh, inverse that. And head over towards the blood trail. Gonna look over at uh, Eugene, ask him, oh, oh god. It's just the claws. She's gonna just quickly go over the pew and decide to look over the wound, see what she can do about it. You can give me an intelligence plus first aid, Kev. Uh, you bandage it up and make it stop bleeding. Stop bleeding. Bonus points. So, uh, how did that thing get in here? Tony? Yeah, my immediate reaction is to head towards the other door to check. I, I, I locked that door. I don't know how they could have got in. I mean... Alright. I mean, maybe there was one hiding underneath it. I, I don't know. There was one under a pew. I Maybe? Okay. She's going to actually kind of put her head down and look underneath everything, just like a quick sweep. Out no, it doesn't like, look like what? there's anything moving under the pews or really anything other at all. Um, she's gonna see, like, there was morphine in that doctor's bag, right? Um. Or some sort of really strong painkiller? Sure, in the doctor's bag, yeah. She's gonna take that out and basically give Potman a quick shot to make him stop her his hero pit. Okay. You do that. Ah, uh, yeah. When Fletch looks around the corner, this door has been completely smashed through. Broken. Entirely. Raked with claw marks, and it's sort of remains lay on the ground in front of it, where it used to be. Shit, it must have busted through while we were fighting at the front. Uh, these are bookcases, right? The bookcases. Just one large bookcase full of old Bibles and other sort of uh, Lutheran-related paraphernalia. Is there any door immediately in front of me here? No, that's uh, that's an open archway. How much of the door is left intact? It It is in complete and total ruins. You see what used to be a door... As if it had just been absolutely ravaged by uh, what those claw things were, and just dismantled. And these four chairs and the one that was up here... Yeah? I want to grab those and just pile them in front of that doorway. Okay. You can most certainly do that. If nothing else, it'll make noise if anything tries to come through. And it is done. Okay. 
Cat's gonna uh, watch that and move over to a pew. Just get moving a pew over to the front of that little aperture there. Telling Tony and Fletch to you know just move out of the way or maybe give a hand if they can. Good Turn help out. Big pew. So we'll hear the noise, and then even if we get through that, they'll have to get over the pew. Actually, yep. is it possible to flip this pew on its side so that it's got like a flat face facing sure. it? Sure, you can definitely do that. That'll uh, basically obscure uh, vision. Well, it's uh, definitely sturdier than most doors, though. I assume the side door was a lot weaker looking than the front heavy doors. Well, while everybody's over here for the moment, uh, Fletch will quietly ask, how's he looking? It's uh, really bad. I gave him a shot of morphine, so at least he won't be uh, won't be hurting so much for a little while. I stopped As a bleeding. side note, Potman's so out of it now. Is it good Between to mix marijuana with shock, morphine? I imagine. <laughs> It's okay, this is B-rated zombie movie, this is not any sort of scientific, you know, plot running in the background. We need to figure out the ramifications of all of our actions. Pop Man is fucking woo! And that's He's all that zonked. matters. We got dangerously tactical for a while, though. He's, like, still sprawled over two pews and not moving. He's not bleeding either, though. That's about it. Mm. Oh, uh, Tony's gonna go back to his seat and sit down. Did uh did you get that cabinet open before the screaming? No, not so much. You want to maybe get back to that? Yeah, unless Ow. something else shows up, I don't think I uh, could be much use up here. She uh, says, I'm going to go reinforce the front and gets on with that. And that'll head back down. Going to first clear away that mess so we've got a cleaner you know, area to move around there. You want some help with that? Sure. Just uh, take the smaller pieces, get them in the corner. She can certainly do that, yeah. Woo, go ahead and rotate that so it's like back there. I'm gonna take the chance and walk outside and look at the uh, door that we pushed open. Okay. See how it looks on the outside, like if they got any thick claw marks through. Uh, just some little bit of superficial beatings on it. Looks like it's still pretty sturdy. Alright. And the current pew... Current pew wasn't really targeted. It's covered in blood and zombie gore. It did have a zombie dog head pushed through it right around. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. There, There is that damage. We did have the rat issue, so... Gonna try to find stuff to just put underneath that that's solid, maybe. Or perhaps just flip it over again. Okay, you can certainly do that, sure. And close the doors and get back inside. Okay, that's not a problem. Tony needs a bath. There's no, it, there's, this place doesn't have running water, does it? Nope. Has a has like a, a sink down there, like where like the fridge is for the perishables. Yeah. But there's no, like, there's no shower time here. Yeah, Tony needs to go and wash up because he's kind of covered in gore and viscera. Live it his own. Yeah. He's going to go down and hang out in the basement for a while, cleaning himself up as best he can. Cat's going to take a seat on a pew and just kind of watch Pop Man. Tapping the bat against the floor, you know, and not boredom, but keep sure. it up. Sure, she can definitely do that. 
Uh, Tony walks downstairs to see all of the wealth of the various supplies there in that large sort of concrete room. One backpack's been, like, haphazardly thrown down as, uh, you know, Cat had come up. Rations all over the ground. He ignores that for now. Well, there is still the stuff we brought with us, which I think I've been keeping track of. More at least some of it, yeah. Either way, Tony's going to be using the the sink to clean up at least his hands and face and as much of his clothes as he can. As best he can. That's what he'll be for a while. Fletch will uh, try to finish up preparing the backpacks, basically, and then head over if there's time before another interruption to actually try to get a handle on that lock. Sure. Passing into the evening now. Um, sort of like with your makeshift little lever there that you've made, the uh, the choir thing is not very sturdy. You can attempt to make a... Um, a simple strength test at a minus six, Brian. 1d10 plus double your strength, minus six. Yeah. <laughs> that does not sound appealing at all. <laughs> um, short of a ten, I could not make that. So he's just going to stick with what he knows and try to figure out the lock. All right. Gonna be a long while studying. You can uh, try re-rolling that tomorrow. Mm -hmm. Could Tony look at it with mechanics and maybe give him a hint? It's a pretty flimsy sort of piece of makeshift metal that's being tried to use as a uh, sort of like a a crowbar. It's not very sturdy, which is why it's uh, the penalty is so stiff. There, mechanic skill really, really wouldn't assist mm -hmm. on that matter. All right, just I might try. I mean, mechanics might be able to help out if he was going after the hinges, but he's not going after the hinges, so there you go. Outside hinges for the cabinet. There are or there aren't? There are. Why don't you just go after the hinges? Yeah, using the cutting torch. Sure, you could certainly do that if you wanted. That seems a lot faster. No. Yeah. You go for the weak point on if you're trying to break something open. Well, you know, as a matter of fact, you know, trusty Tony might have the most experience there with that cutting torch. Yeah. Yeah. You could, could get some hot, hot fire burning. Yep. Take me. I'll take it. If you want me to, I'll try. I'll cut off those, uh, those hinges if you want me to. And do I have to roll for that, I guess? No, there's no need for a roll. Just got to take some time. It is a reinforced cabinet, but you are going after its weak spots. Mm -hmm. Take a, take an hour. All right. This is what Tony will be doing for an hour, then. Attacking a weak tech. Cat's going to just keep watching Eugene, making sure he's breathing and, you know, not in obvious pain that she could do anything about. In that case, um, eventually, Trusty Tony burns through the hinges and the cabinet doors fall right off. <laughs> boom, boom. Inside, uh, the first thing that catches Tony's eye glinting off the uh, the Spartan light located within uh, the austere living room is a fucking great sword. What? A what? great sword. <laughs> Was our father here trying to become a crusader? It was, you know, it's like uh, strapped, you know, you got its hilt and everything, you sheath it, it's got, uh, amusingly enough, like a CB, like embedded in little script in the pommel of the weapon. Beside it are 13 copies of Braveheart. <laughs> <laughs> it's, uh, it's very, it's very sharp, uh, and it could be very effective on that front. There is also a uh, civilian rifle, more specifically an AR-15, with uh, 30 rounds of 5.56. There is also a scope put on this rifle, which gives it a plus two to any aim tasks you make using this rifle. Now we'll go ahead and uh, list that down. And of course, uh, anyone who's not trained in actually using a rifle can use any gun skill they currently possess at a minus three penalty. Hey, I have a gun skill at my... I have a gun skill at three, so that would be a zero. I'd be rolling dexterity. 
Hold your it would, it's actually a minus two, and it, right, not a minus three. So you'd actually get a plus one for knowing how to shoot a pistol. Yeah. Yeah. And you also cool. and you also have a Colt nine millimeter sim, uh, semi-automatic gun. Which is a, which is a machine gun, excuse Same. me, SMG, with a thirty-two round detachable box magazine. It's fully loaded. Oh yeah, you should definitely give Potman the automatic weapon. Hey Potman, you want this? Hey Potman, you want the automatic weapon? <laughs> Silence. The only oh, response you're, you're, you could get from Potman right now yeah, sounds yeah, like a zombie. You're, you're shouting up from the basement from the little room. Hey Potman, <laughs> you want this? <laughs> and then you have a gun cleaning kit with all the sort of like little tools and bells and whistles that you'd have in a gun cleaning kit to make sure the barrel remains clean and the gun remains serviceable through a hard use. Start checking the weapons over to make sure they're actually everything cycling and functional. Oh yeah, they're they're great. Clean as a so, whistle. Haven't seen much use as of late, but uh, they're definitely in good maintenance. Any comments? Where so, the hell did he get an SMG? Gun store. They can't sell full auto. It um. There appears to be, uh, to sort of Fletch's trained eyes, since he's used guns before, uh, almost as if there's, like, little sort of, like, customizations and, like, modifications made on his own, like, the scope there doesn't... Uh, almost as if, uh, perhaps the good father is some sort of gunsmith. Yeah, let me tell you about this. It's not that hard to, you know, uh, file down the firing pin deck, get full auto going on these things. I haven't done it because I'm not crazy. <laughs> 